side, but we'd come halfway around the world, so we thought we'd go take a look. We struck off across the sand dunes, led by our friend, Terence of Africa. Halfway around the world and halfway across the dunes, it seemed like a bad idea. It started to get pretty hot. The odds were against us finding, sir. We didn't even know if we'd find the water. When you go looking for surf, you don't look for a really big wave. If you found one, you'd never ride it in strange waters. It would be much too dangerous. What every surfer dreams of finding is a small wave with perfect shape, what we call a perfect wave. The odds against finding that are 10 million to one. They finally got their first look at Cape St. Francis, South Africa. can't tell how good a wave is till you actually ride it. On Mike's first ride, the first five seconds, he knew he'd finally found that perfect wave. The waves looked like they'd been made by some kind of a machine. The rides were so long, I couldn't get most of them on one piece of film. Here's Mike further along still riding the same wave at Cape St. Francis. On some of the rides, I timed them in the curl for 45 seconds. Outside, really driving about halfway through the wave already, Robert August. Look at the wave in front, same perfect shape as the wave he's on. After we rode Cape St. Francis, we talked to fishermen who come in this area quite frequently. They told us the waves there were funny looking things. They said they looked like pipes. And they said the waves always look like that, day after day, same stupid looking waves. They told us of days when the surf broke big out by the end of the Cape seven miles further out and rolled all the way in to where we were surfing. Can you imagine riding a 15-foot wave shaped like this for seven miles? You'd have a nervous breakdown the first 50 yards. I had one on a three-foot wave. From all the information we could gather, we figured it's like this about 300 days of the year. The water was 70 degrees, the prevailing wind there straight offshore a perfect wave and perfect conditions. The only disadvantage was you kept getting cramps in your legs from squatting down for so long in the curl. The thing you can't show is the fantastic speed and that feeling you get in the pit of your stomach. It's the kind of a wave that makes you talk to yourself. I couldn't help but think of the hundreds of years these waves must have been breaking here, but until this day, no one had ever ridden one. Think of the thousands of waves that went to waste, and the waves that are going to waste right now at Cape St. Francis. Out of the whole day of surfing, we didn't see one wave section or break in front of itself. Each wave was perfect. The surf came in diagonally, which gave you this long ride. It was shallow, only a foot or two deep beneath Robert's board. Sandy bottom with rocks along the shoreline. Strictly a one-man wave, just wasn't room for two surfers. Here, Robert's really in the right spot, but Mike, with the wake of his board, causing the wave to break sooner than it normally would have, before long, Mike was in the right spot. 
Every surfer dreams of finding a place as good as Malibu or Rincon. We found a place that's better, and it's better every day. The best ride of the day was one that Robert got really locked in, screaming at the top of his lungs. Robert came over the top of the wave and let out a bellow you could hear halfway back to Cape Town. He was so excited, he was almost frothing at the mouth. Mike was kind of excited, too. Oh, big deal. 